Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to another episode of Red Plan Index. Before we dive in, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. If you've never heard of Squarespace, it is the all-in-one platform to build and manage your website quickly and conveniently, but more on that later in the video. If you are new to this video and you have no idea what a Red Plan Index is, a Red Plan Index is a series here on YouTube where I take a type of plant and I categorize it between uncommon common, rare, very rare, extremely rare, and holy. This video features around about 27, 28 plants, something like that. And as you can see from the title, this episode is all about Anthurium. Now, I did do an Anthurium Red Plant Index sometime in 2019. I'm updating it. I have done this with a couple of others. I believe I've done this with philodendron? Have I done anything else? I'm not sure, but I've done this before and I'm updating it. So you will see some of the same plants that appeared in that original one. If you've never seen the original and you would like to, I will leave the link for that down below. I also have a playlist just dedicated to my Red Plant Index series. So if you'd like to dive into that, I will also leave that in a link down below. Last but not least, one thing I would like to say is that the plants in this video are categorized via commercial rarity. So I am not talking about numbers of plants in the wild. I'm talking about how commercially available these plants are for you to buy legally. It's very important to note that what is rare for someone else in one part of the world may not be rare for someone else in another part of the world. So with that in mind, take everything I say with a grain of salt, please do your own research, and you might find some plants are easier or harder to get for you. But I always try and provide a general baseline as to how rare things are, where I can. As usual, I'm going to start with a couple of common plants just so that you can understand what an anthurium is if you've never seen an anthurium before. So I'm going to start with a couple of common ones and then we will kick right off. So the first common anthurium that I, I feel like most people have heard of would have to be the Clarinervium. This is so awesome. It wasn't quite as common as what it is now, but it's honestly, it's amazing. It's very easy anthurium as well. So if you're looking to get into anthuriums as your starter point, look no further than this one. Literally, this is your perfect budget anthurium. The only thing I've found that is negative about this anthurium compared to a lot of others is just the ability to get bacteria or fungus. It can happen, it cannot happen, it just depends. I've just found that it's a little bit more prone than others and a lot of time when you buy it from big box stores it can already have this bacteria present so just be careful I guess. Just be careful when you pick one but I do recommend them for an easy anthurium. The other common plant I want to mention is Anthurium andreinum. Honestly this refers to like a huge selection of these plants like ranging from different colored flowers and things like that. Honestly this kind of classifies a range of anthurium within it. Generally they look the same but they have different flowers. It tends to be the wax looking anthurium that you get in a lot of garden centers and big box stores that will probably be some kind of andreinum um, if I'm saying that right by the way can't say anything on them never owned one but by the fact that they're in big box stores means they must be very easy so if you don't want the clarinervium and you like the idea of a colored flower then absolutely go for one of these there are a few different types um, I haven't written down specific types but I know you can get you know white pink black different colored flowers on them so it's worth just looking it up on Google I guess right that is the comment section done. If you're looking for an easy way to build and run your own website, then look no further than Squarespace. Squarespace is your one-stop shop to create your own website from the ground up using a selection of stylish and super customizable templates. Not only that, but Squarespace helps me optimize my visibility on the internet by showing me what people are searching for in order to find my shop. For example, here you can see various ways of Googling my shop name, plus a search for a specific house plan, which is the Philodendron Whipple Way, which was a bit of a surprise to me, actually. If you want to create Create a really sleek, efficient website, either for yourself or perhaps you're setting up a web shop like mine, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it for voiceover, Kaylee. Back to the video. Kicking off Uncommon. Here we go. Are you ready? The first anthurium in Uncommon would have to be the Crystallinum. Now this, I, th I can't remember where I put this originally in my old Red Plan Index, okay? I kind of remember, but no doubt it was rarer than Uncommon. I can tell you that for nothing. They've become really, really common, and I think that's a great thing because they're quite easy to grow. So if you want to progress into a more difficult type of anthurium, I would honestly recommend this one as your starting point. Or if you just don't like the Clarinervium and you want a little bit of a challenge, then I would definitely go for this one. It's really easy for a velvety, veiny type. 
It's just my findings, and that's obviously why there are so many around, because they're kind of proving themselves, I guess. They're very contrasty because they have super, super, super white veins. So I say white, and more silver, really, to be honest. That tends to make the leaves look very, very dark in comparison, so it's really, really nice contrasty plant. I think if you want contrast in a plant collection, but you don't like variegated plants at all, something like this is very good to go for, because there's a lot of contrast, but it's not variegation. Moving swiftly on in Uncommon, we have the Anthurium Forgettii. This is one of my favourites, and you can get it in two different types types. One of them has veins much like the crystallinum that I just showed you, and the other type, which I totally prefer by the way, is the type with nothing on it at all. I think it's known as dark form, so there is a version with silver veins if you like that, and there is a version that is dark. The main thing that categorizes this plant, to be honest with you, is the lack of sinus, so it's not a heart shape at the top of the leaf, as you'll probably see in the image. It is literally totally round, and it's very, very, very cute, I've got to say. Reminds me of a beauty blender, if you do makeup. Have I got one on my counter? Yeah. It reminds me of this, even though that's actually shaped, but anyway, unrelated. They do propagate really well, I have to tell you that, and what I can tell you as well is that not all anthuriums pop much like these ones do, but these ones really, really do. You can propagate this plant without even trying, because it will probably duplicate itself. If you don't know what popping means, I'm essentially saying that the big plant may grow little small plants around the base, and you can just remove those and have new plants. Very, very cute, very, very easy if you want to be able to either multiply this plant, or give it to your friends, or sell it, or whatever you want to do. Great anthurium. Just as easy care as well. Just as easy care. Lovely, lovely plant. They start off small, they do size up, but they take a little bit longer, which is quite nice if you want something a little bit more compact. Ooh, I like this one. So next plant in Uncommon, we have the Anthurium Magnificum, and I love these plants so much. They're one of my favourite Anthuriums, actually. They weren't originally, but they are now. My favourite happens to be the type without any really veining. The one I'm showing you will have more of a vein in it, but still both beautiful, don't get me wrong, but I prefer the more muted types. I don't know why that is. If you want an anthurium that can actually grow quite big, then I would recommend this one, because trust me when I say it is tough. I've had a lot of these shipped from Indonesia during the pandemic, and they were treated horribly, and they looked amazing, and they held their size, and they were beautiful. A lot of you might remember them on my channel. I got some really, really big plants in. They're still fine. A lot of them are on my wall, and they look great. So sizing up, brilliant. Cannot recommend more. It's probably the number one uncommon anthurium I would recommend you get for sizing up. They're also a little bit more resistant to bacteria and fungus, unlike other anthurium as well, so it's quite a nice one if you want something a little bit big. Right, next we have the Anthurium waroquinum, or waroquianum, or however you pronounce it. There is different pronunciations depending on what you feel like, quite frankly. I'm not one for getting the pronunciations exactly right going to be honest, I'm not on this channel, you know I'm not. I don't think it matters, to be honest. But anyway, not the point. So it goes without saying that these plants actually used to be extremely rare, and I mean extremely rare back in 2019, before the rare plant boom kind of kicked off. These were not found. Very few people had them. Obviously, I think a few people had them in Florida and stuff. They weren't really seen over here where I am, in UK, in Europe. I'm not saying they didn't exist. I'm just saying there was hardly any of them. They're very, very difficult to care for. There has always been two forms available. I think we have the dark form and the regular green form. And now it's weird because the dark form used to be more rare but it's kind of done a U-turn, and now the lighter green form, I would argue, is more rare than the dark form. So it's kind of cool. I'm probably showing you a picture of the dark form, because that's mainly what I have growing in my studio. They're quite variable, but they're very, very beautiful, and if you want something with some length to it, then this is your boy. However, I have to tell you, they are not that easy at all, and they're actually a little bit pricey. Now, you're probably thinking, if they are uncommon, what is going on with the hefty price tag? And honestly, my best guess is that they are so difficult to ship in and rehabilitate. Now, you ship them in, and they turn into Doritos real quick, and I know so many of you will have actually discovered that upon shipping them in. It can happen from shops, it definitely happens from just shipping them straight from nurseries overseas and everything else. It's not fun, and it takes everyone, universally, a long time to rehabilitate these. So you do see them sold with one leaf, and this is why. Normally, when I get them in, they become stumps. I have to wait months for them to turn around and produce a lovely big leaf for me, and then I will sell them on. But that takes a while. And a lot of sellers, including myself, have to factor in loss of plants on the way in, as well as just the general rehabilitation time, the time and utilities, of course, for growing them and everything else. So they tend to have a higher price tag, even though they are more available. Does that make any sense? 
Honestly, high prices don't always mean rarity. It could mean difficulty, you know, it really could. If you're just getting into Anthurium, I would probably avoid this one just for a while until you get a little bit more experience. Maybe get some of the other ones on this list in in common and go from there. Maybe try Magnificum, Crystalline and Forgetii first and really get a handle on how Anthurium are because Queens, they're not amazing. They look amazing and when they get going, they're great. But that point when you get them in and rehab them, not so much. Right, next up, we have the Anthurium Vici, also known as the King Anthurium. Now, this, unlike the last plant, is a hell of a lot more easy to care for, probably because it's glossy and it's not velvet. Now, a lot of glossy types of Anthurium tend to be quite easy. Honestly, they are. They don't need as much humidity. They're quite hardy. They can tolerate underwatering a lot more. They can tolerate kind of bad quality water a lot more as well. So they're really quite good if you want to stretch out your Anthurium collection, but you don't want something velvety. They were extremely rare in 2019, but they are not anymore. Though you don't see as many in collections, actually. I've got to say that. I don't think they're the preferred Anthurium. I'm not really sure why that is. If you know why that is, please leave a comment, because I don't see them often, even though they're quite easy and everything else. I don't think they're the quickest growers but I would still say they were easy because they don't deteriorate. Make any sense? I like them. I do like them. I'd like to see more because I do think they're a great plant. And to be honest, I'd like to sell some more because no one has any problems with them that I know of. Right. We're now in the rare category and we're going to kick it off with the Anthurium peltigerum. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Again, it don't matter. It's just plants. So this, oh, I wanted to love this so much and I do like the plant, but it's it's not very easy, guys. So this looks a lot like an Anthurium forgetii that we covered earlier, only the texture is is not that. It's like a forgetii crossed with like a pig's ear in texture. It's really weird. It's kind of rubbery. It's really fleshy. Now you'd think that would make it quite easy to grow. But for me, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. I find it quite difficult. So in my opinion, it's not really an easy plant, to be honest. It's not easy to ship. It's not easy to rehab. And I would say it was for more experienced Anthurium growers. So again, maybe avoid it if you're just getting into Anthurium. If you think you can handle it, go for it. I do think they're very cute when they go. It is also a super weird plant. So if you want something kind of quirky for your plant collection, you want to build a collection that is unlike other people's, then it's a really good plant to go for. If you're bored of seeing Anthurium forgetii and you look at that and you think, hmm, that's quite different. I like that. Then go for it. I think it's a nice one. Just be careful. Next on the list, we have the Anthurium. Why, well, right? How do I pronounce this? Papillilaminum. Papillilamium. Papillilaminum. It's on the screen, of course. So the picture I'm showing you now might not be of a real one. And I say this because, oh my goodness, try and Google this plant because the amount of hybrids with it are insane. Now, I thought I had one, and a lot of people have told me that, no, I don't think it's full papil papillolamium, or whatever it is. It's probably a hybrid, so I'm willing to say that mine is. I've picked a picture to show you, but I can't sit here and tell you that it's the real one. If you know in the comments, if I've got it right, let me know. It's highly likely that I have not, but that's okay. Just Google it. So what I will say off the back of that is if you want one, be very careful and make sure that you know it's a real one. Get a second and third opinion on the ID if that's what you want. Or of course, if you see a hybrid and you like it, then great. They're very accessible if you just want a bit of the plant or you just want the general vibe. Because a lot of the variations of it, a lot of the hybrids of it do tend to look quite similar. They're all dark. A lot of them do have decent, you know, ears on them, the lobes, and they look quite nice. But definitely get a second opinion. The one I have, I would describe it as easy care. I just wouldn't describe it as a fast grower. And they can be both. Plants can be both. So... It's kind of up to you if you want it. I think if you want something darker in colour, it's not as expensive as a lot of the other darker plants. And because there are so many variations of this plant, I think it'd be a really good thing for you to have a look and see if you like it. And to be honest, you don't need to care if it's full papillolamium or whatever it is, if you just like the look of it. Because there's another plant further down on this list that is a lot more expensive. It is darker in colour, but is a lot more expensive. So if you want something a little bit darker in your collection, try one of these because you might fall in love with it. Oh, I don't know how I feel about this plant either. Next plant on the list, we have the Anthurium villanoarum, and I have a really itchy eyeball right now. I think it's my eyelashes. So this plant, I really like them, but I don't know how I feel about them. I can't remember when I found out about these. I think it was late 2020. And I like them because they kind of look like a short, stubby version of a Queen Anthurium, a little bit. The only thing that puts me off this plant personally is how pale these plants are. I'm not sure how pale the picture I'm showing you is. I think it's my picture that I'm showing you. They are paler than a lot of other Anthurium. They just are. You can get them darker, of course, but generally speaking, they're quite pale, which suggests they're either really reactive to food, really reactive to light, or they're just pale. I haven't had enough experience to be able to give you a concrete answer. So again, if somebody knows, Please leave a comment. It will help us all out. Plus points 
they are a little bit stubbier. So if you like a Queen Anne theorem, but you want something different, this is very similar to the Pelty Gerum situation versus the Forgetti Eye situation. If you want something that just looks a little bit different, but gives you that like some familiarity, really good one to go for. So one I remember, and I won't have a picture of it, but the petioles are almost triangle shape. I think they've got a really weird shape to them, which is kind of cool. So yeah, if you want something contrasty, veiny, stubby, takes up less space, a little bit different, this might be your plant. Next on the list for rare, we have the Anthurium corrigatum. Now, I like them, but they're not the easiest plants to look after. I do have some experience with them, and as the name suggests, they are corrugated, which means that they are a little bit difficult. Generally speaking, honestly, most corrugated plants, no matter what the plant is, whether it's philodendron, anthurium, or whatever, they tend to be a little bit difficult to look after. I'm not going to lie. We're talking crisping up, melting away, all the rest. So I'm not loving these for that. I'm not going to recommend them saying that they're easy care because they are not in my experience. They are, however, the best corrugated anthurium I've probably looked after, which doesn't say a lot, don't get me wrong, but they're on the, the easier side of corrugated anthuriums, maybe. I'm pretty sure these are matte, though, and not glossy, and a lot of other corrugated anthuriums are glossy, so if you like the matte finish, this might be a nice one. Right, I can't say the name of this either. Next plant on the list is the anthurium cuticuense. Cuticuense? It's on the screen, guys. It's on the screen. So I've had these before. I've had a lot of these in and it's, they're really polarizing, you know. I think they either love you or hate you, basically is what I've been able to deduce. They loved me when I was in my old shop, if any of you guys remember that. I'm sure you will. Briefly in 2020, you saw my old shop. They loved it in there and they grew really, really well, but they don't in this shop. And I'm wondering if that's to do with the heat. I want to say they might like more heat than what I give them now. I'm not sure because that old shop got very, very hot in the summer and they loved it and they grew really well. They grew really well under quite a lot of light as well. One thing I will say is, as you can probably see, this is a very delicate looking anthurium. The leaves are really cool. They kind of split into three. They are sort of corrugated, sort of ribbed. The only thing I would suggest is don't put them somewhere where they can be trafficked. I would honestly think about putting this one in a cabinet because it's probably very, very, very easy to break. I've never had any break, but they don't get trafficked either. So just letting you know, it's a little bit more on the delicate side. It's very different and it's definitely a talking point, but growing them is not the easiest, going to be honest. Next on the list, one of my personal favourites, this is the Anthurium Luxurians, and it is very, very sexy, and I'm sure you will agree. It's corrugated, but unlike the other corrugated Anthurium, the Corrugatum, this one is glossy, so that's a little bit different. They size up real nice, by the way, doesn't take them a ton of time, but one thing I have noticed is these Anthurium are very, very, very sensitive to either water changes or humidity changes and things like that. Mine is not doing so well. If you remember mine, it's actually the one I'm showing you, but that was a while ago. It hasn't done so well because I haven't been into the studio very often and I haven't been able to check it for water and everything else. I presume humidity has been constant because it's the same as the shops, but it's probably suffered a little bit on the watering front. So it's not great. I can tell you that for definite, it's not great on warring. So beautiful anthurium though. They do cost a bit, not going to lie. I think they are high three digits or were, maybe mid, maybe high. I think they had a bit of a dip at one point and came down to mid three digits and now they're back up. Could be wrong. Again, feel free to update anyone in the comments if you happen to know. Just remember that prices are subjective and they change all the time. Anything on this list could change in three months. Do you know what I mean? The, the plant market is just crazy at the minute. But I do recommend them. Not quite for beginners. They're pretty good, don't get me wrong. Just be on it with your watering a little bit more, I would say. Ah, one of my most hated Anthurium. This is Anthurium Splendidum. This is possibly the most difficult corrugated Anthurium I've ever had the misfortune of owning. And I have owned a couple. I think I've owned two, but both were horrific and I would never buy them again. I don't really have any need to. I think there's so many other Anthurium out there that you could get away with. What I do know is that a lot of people grow these inside AJ cabinets, cloches, terrariums, whatever. I don't think this particular Anthurium likes drafts or general airflow. I think it prefers to not have it. So in my unit, in my shop, that's a no-go for me because I need airflow to get to my plants because a lot of my trays are packed very, very densely. So it's a no-go for me. I don't know how many people strive to own it. I think the people growing them covered completely are having good success, but it's not for me. And personally, I would not recommend them as a corrugated anthurium. I would recommend Luxurians or the Corrugatum over this one. But don't let that stop you. It's just my opinion. 
just letting you know. Maybe Google it and have a look on Facebook and get other people's opinions on how difficult or not difficult they are if you want to get one. Also, price, don't know. Back in the day when I bought them, they were very, very, very expensive. The, the cost price on them alone was just ridiculous. I don't know what they're like now. They might be cheaper. I don't know. It could be a flex if you grew it really well. It could be a flex because they are very difficult. Right. Next plan on the list. Oh, this one is nice. This one is nice. This is the Anthurium Cyrenoi. I think that's how you say it. And this planet's hot, guys. This is hot. You need to start Googling this planet. In fact, write it down. Google it. Google it while I'm talking about it. Because honestly, this, this is not doing it justice at all. I just couldn't find a decent picture that would actually fill in this frame. Because the plants are so long, I couldn't find a picture that would actually fit on the screen. So that's why I've had to include something from one of my thumbnails. Seriously, Google it. Amazing, amazing plants. So it's a little bit like, if I could compare it to something, it's a little bit like a Magnificum crossed with a Queen Anthurium. Now... I originally thought they were a little bit easier than what they are. I wouldn't suggest that they're brilliant to grow. It's one of these plants where if it's not happy, it just won't grow. It won't really deteriorate. They can get bacteria. They can get fungus, all of that. I don't want to put you off. I just don't have enough experience with them because I think I only bought two or three in. Um, I think they had quite a price tag on them. So can't give you enough experience to say whether I recommend them or not. But I can tell you that they're gorgeous. And I can tell you that I've had an all right run with them. So take from that what you will. But ooh. It's really nice, isn't it? If you want something that's like a bit dark, a bit dramatic, but you don't want to go for the obvious choice, another really, really nice one. Moving up category into very rare, we will start it out with the Anthurium Wendlingeri. I think. Wendlingeri. Wendlingeri. I don't know. This is a beautiful Anthurium, but my gosh, they have a price tag. I don't think they're very easy either. I know they don't ship well. I know they don't rehabilitate very well. So they're lovely. And they are what we like to call in the trade long boys. It's a very professional term for plants that are very long in length. Can you be long in anything that isn't length? No, you can't. So they are called long boys and they're very, very pretty. And a lot of my length obsessed collectors will probably want one. But what I will say is if you're more of a beginner and you're coming into this wanting to try a long boy, I wouldn't recommend this one. Straight up going to tell you not to get it. I'm going to tell you to get the Anthurium Vitari Folium, which is not exactly the same. It doesn't look quite as nice. But if you want that effect of having like a belt-like pendulous plant, that's the one you should go for. Trust me, they are cheaper. They are 10 times tougher. They are marvelous. I don't really know anyone that doesn't like them personally. And I think they're great. But if you're wanting to collect more long boys, then yes, of course. I'm just, I've personally had a couple of myself and I think a lot of them died. I don't think they did very well. But yeah, obviously price difference as well. But do I think it's sexy? Hell yeah, I think it's sexy. I think it's beautiful. Look at it. It's beautiful, but there are things that are easier. If you just don't want the headache, you don't want to waste your money, you don't want to risk everything dying, the Vitariofolium is potentially better. So I'm kind of cock-blocking that plant <laughs> with another one, but I had to mention it because I know a lot of you guys write stuff like this down for a wish list, but if I know something that might kind of make your life easier in the long run, I'm going to tell you. So there you go. The next one. Oh, I only found out about this very recently. I think I've heard the name kicking about, but I never bothered to look it up. This here is the Anthurium Carla Blackiehi. I presume that's named after someone. So this is not an Anthurium I've owned. It's not an Anthurium I've even seen in real life. I've only seen photographs, but I've seen a few photographs. A lot of them seem to be Miss IDs. So again, very difficult to work out what I'm showing you. I think the picture I'm using is from NSE Tropicals because I trust Enid's ID skills and to know where she got her plants from. So I'm showing you that in the belief that it's a real one. Because if you look on Google, you will find a little bit of conflict there with what's kind of what's shown. They're really, really nice though. And I do like them. They seem to be very dark. When they're babies, they don't look particularly special from what I've seen, gonna be honest, unless those are wrong IDs, of course. But once they mature, you can really see it. Like you can really see the difference. The veining is quite unusual, I would say. And to be honest, from what I've seen, the sections between the veins on the leaf kind of pillow out a little bit. And it's quite pretty, actually. I kind of like that. I think I'd buy this if I saw it personally, but I don't know how available they are outside of the US. So you might have to do your research there. Again, if you know, feel free to write a comment. But I don't see them. I, I haven't seen them in the UK or the EU. Not to say they don't exist. Just saying I haven't seen them personally. Ah, oh, it's nice though, isn't it? That veining's lovely. That's really, really nice. So next plant on the list. Can I even pronounce this? This is the Anthurium clydemioides. We're going to go with that. So I don't know how to feel about this one because it looks 
kind of nice, but the leaves look paper thin from what I've seen on Google looking at a few different photographs. From my experience, plants with thin leaves like that are going to be pretty bad shippers. To be honest, this plant reminds me a lot of a lot of pipers that you see. It looks like it's the same texture. It seems to grow in more of a vine-like manner. I would liken it more to a piper based on the pictures that I'm seeing. So what I'm saying could be completely false. And if you know otherwise, again, feel free to leave a comment. But I would personally steer clear from this. Until I see people that own this going, yes, oh my god, this is brilliant, I'm staying well clear of this. Even though, yes, it looks very, very cute. It almost looks like, um, oh, I don't know what plant I'm thinking of. It's got the same texture as one of the more common plants, and it's a very brightly coloured plant. It's not a coleus, is it? It's something, and it's got the same texture. If you know what I'm talking about, please leave a comment. I think you might know. It's got that weird texture to it, but it still looks thin. So I'm going to avoid this one for sure. Next plant on the list is the Anthurium Selby Silver. Now then, I do have a couple of these. No doubt I'm showing you a picture of one. They're actually quite hard to get, and they're not cheap at all. I don't know how I feel about them. I think they're cute, but I don't prefer them to a lot of other plants. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I think these plants are basically a miniature crystallinum, kind of like a sport, and the veining is a lot more blown out and more silver. But the thing for me is I actually find them a little bit untidy. That's kind of why I don't prefer them. I just think that the veining isn't that nice. It depends. If you love silver, then yeah, it's better. But for me, I don't. I actually prefer a standard crystallinum over this. Just my opinion. They are highly, 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 highly collectible though. So if you want one, you may have to hunt a little bit. Again, I'm not sure of their prominence in different places, but you might have to hunt for it. Very, very nice one. I don't know how big or small they stay either. And I'm talking about this before I actually visit my shop after recording this, where I will then take the picture that you are seeing. So I actually don't even know what it's going to look like, but I don't think they go super big. I think they're a little bit more dwarfed, but again, it could be very wrong. Lovely plant, highly collectible, but I do see a lot of these on the internet that are not genuine. So I see a lot of people saying something is Selby silver when it is not. So please, please, please be very, very careful if you're going to buy one. Get a second opinion, get a third opinion. Got to put that out there. Next plant is the Anthurium Macrolobium X, you could say. So I believe this is a hybrid of Clarinervium and Pedatorradiatum. Pedatorradiatum. I can never say that name without really slowing down. So they have a really nice shape to them. And you, honestly, you need to see them more mature. I'm probably showing you a baby, to be honest. But listen, right? These things are tough as nails and i mean it if you know me you know i've spoke about this a lot before if you want a glossy anthurium with a different shape it does have some botanical significance this is your boy i don't think they're super cheap i don't think they're super expensive they're not a sexy plant like they're not highly sought after but they're a really 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 nice plant and they are so tough guys they do the same thing as the anthurium forgetii does they're very very quick to produce pups so that's really nice as well again because a lot of things can look similar. You really need to do your research before buying one because a lot of people will say that something is that when it is not. So you really have to do your research if you want to have the real deal. The ones I'm selling are definitely the real deal. Not that I'm telling you to buy from me. I'm just saying there are sellers out there that have the real deal, but you need to be very, very careful. There's a lot of stuff that comes from Indonesia that is not the real deal. So just be careful with that one. It is nice. just doesn't get enough press, to be honest. really doesn't. Ooh, next one. You're either going to care or not care, quite frankly. This is the Anthurium Red Crystallinum, or Red Crystal, or Crystallinum Red. Again, you're going to care or not care. I have one of these. I think I had three. I think I've sold two, so one is left. And peach, this costs some cash, guys. This costs some cash. So basically, it's an Anthurium Crystallinum, but it's a super, super red version. So the leaves kind of come out. I don't have a color on my desk to show you. But it's a reddy, pinky, purpley tone that they come out. And when the leaves harden off, they do look different to a crystallinum. Like, there is a visible difference there. I think the petiole insertion, where you see a little dot on that leaf in the picture I'm probably showing you, that is another hallmark of the fact that they're different. And I think a proper red crystal, you should see that dot, as well as seeing new leaves come in, like, very, very red. I don't mean that bronze anthurium colour. I mean pinky red. It's very, very apparent. So you shouldn't have to do too much research if you want to buy one of those but it will stain your wallet a little bit. It will come for your wallet. It will come for your livelihood. It's not cheap. It's not ridiculous. I think it's, um, is it mid, mid three figures, something like that. It's not ridiculous, but it's not great either. And there aren't many around. So you're going to have to do your digging if you want one of these. Again, you'll either care or not care. It depends if you care or not. If you like regular crystallinum, go for it, honestly. From my experience and caring for them, I haven't had many granted, but they don't seem any different from a regular crystallinum. So if that's any comfort for you, then 
there you go. If you want to buy one, get looking, get a second opinion if you're worried, and look for any red dots. Oh, another one that's just expensive. And I did kind of reference this one earlier on. This is the Anthurium Ace of Spades. And I love these plants, but man, they're expensive. I'm not going to rattle on about how cheap they once were when they're in tissue culture. I'm not, I promise I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. They get their name because of their dark shape, obviously. And they kind of resemble an Ace of Spades. That's why they get the name. I really do want one of these. I really do. And really, in hindsight, probably should have gone on my wish list but I, I wasn't thinking about it. I should have really recorded this before the wish list and it probably would have gone on, but I'm not going to pay the price. I don't know if they are high three figures, like high three figures. They might have dipped, they might have come back up, but you never see them and they're very expensive. Can't tell you anything about the care. I think I had one once long ago and I had one and I think I opened the shop with them or I sold it in like the second or third launch. If you're the lucky person that bought it from me, let me know how it's doing because I know I had one a long time ago, but Never seen one in real life since. Again, there's a lot of imposter plants out there, so be careful what you're buying, do your research, get a second opinion. Always get a second opinion if you're ever unsure on any plant, literally any plant. Right, we are into the extremely rare category, and we're going to start out with the Anthurium Rotolantium. Probably no one's ever heard of this. I thought I'd stick in a complete, like, left-field oddball, and this is quite a nice plant, but this plant is kind of unknown, not going to lie. Some people think it's a hybrid, some people think it's actually a species, but no one actually knows. There is no data on it. This plant is owned by a collector named William Rotolanti. I believe that's how I pronounce your name, William. Sorry if I've got that wrong. And I think he's had it for several years. He did say that this plant has never produced viable pollen, so it's very difficult to propagate or hybridize, which makes it very rare. It's very, very cool. I quite like that. It's a little bit like a corrugatum crossed with like a luxuriance or something. It's really quite nice. I thought I would include this again because it's really pretty and it's something that you haven't seen before. So why not include it for flavor? Really nice plant though, just I literally can't tell you a damn thing about it and neither can anyone else because it's so elusive. I don't think it's going to come onto the market anytime sooner or anything like that though. So next plant on the list, a favorite of mine, but my god, they're not very easy to grow, I'm going to be honest. This is the Anthurium King of Clarinervium. It is a Clarinervium hybrid with something. I did give this a Google and I can't find out what the plant is that it's a hybrid with. I'm not sure it's known, which sounds a bit ridiculous because some of them are kicking around. I don't know. I don't get it. They're very variable as well, so you will actually see different versions of the plant, but it is the plant. It's what's called an F1 hybrid, which I'll just be very brief about it. Basically means they're very, very variable. So that's going to be really hard if you want to buy one of these. I'm not going to lie to you. They do have a price tag as well. Pick the one based on what it looks like in the image and go with that. So if you're not happy with how it looks in the image, don't assume it's going to change and become another picture of another one that you see. Really, really judge it based on what you are offered. So that's my best tip for that. Um, again, yeah, they don't grow very well for me. I haven't been able to grow them. I'm going to actually move them up into the studio. I have three different ones um, they just haven't grown. They have not grown. So I'm going to do something with them anyway. Um, I love the plant though. And as you can see, it's it's a bit of a showstopper. You've got to admit, it's a bit of a showstopper. Pretty sure there's a price tag on them though. I, I don't see them sold personally. I, I really don't. So if you know the price tag of them, feel free to write a comment. Yeah, I have no idea, but not the easiest. I'm not necessarily going to recommend them. Really depends. I need more time to figure it out. I need to, maybe I just need to repot them. I bet they just shoot away once I've repotted them, you know. Typical. Anyone else do that with plants? You think they're not going to grow and then you just repot them and you think, well, roots disturbance is going to slow us down and it just doesn't and the plant goes nuts because it wasn't happy about something. Happens to me all the time. Okay, another really, really sexy plant. This is the Anthurium Black Widow, or is it Dr. Black Widow? I think it's Black Widow. Um, so this plant dates back to the 1990s, and it's an Anthurium hybrid developed by Dr. Jeff Block, also known as Dr. Block. You will see some really, really quite stunning different Anthurium on offer. I'm pretty sure he specializes in Anthuriums, and there, you get a lot from him, and his plants are quite high value because what he does is he breeds his plants together to to get the best of so he will produce the best crystallinum he can produce and it will look a lot different to a lot of the other crystallinums that we see kicking around you will know if you see a dr jeff block plant put it that way this one i had to kind of put in my red plant index because this one i would love to own this plant how nice is this so if you can't already tell it's been named black widow because of the kind of spider pattern really isn't it on the leaves it's so nice it's not a pattern i think i've seen before 
I don't think. You could argue that Carla Blackie Eye is like remotely similar, and I mean remotely similar, but this is something quite unique. I really, really like that. I would put it on a wish list, but I, this isn't really the kind of plant that you're going to get a hold of. It depends what Dr. Block wants to do with it. I, I don't know, really. The picture I'm looking at, it's obviously one big plant. Um, don't know. Don't know how much he's producing or anything, to be honest, so I can't even make a comment on it, but it's really gorgeous and I had to put it in just so we can all see it and appreciate it if nothing else. Not only that right but plant goths? Am I kidding? No I'm not. This is a brilliant plant for plant goths or at least a good one to idolize and look for something similar because that's really sexy. Oh but the next plant oh my god I found out about this two days ago didn't know it existed and oh if I could go back in time and change my philodendron spirit to sancti jupes video I would put this plant in it. I just did not know about this plant, guys. Apparently it does have a price tag, actually, so that's the bad news, I guess, but we are in extremely rare, so yeah, you're gonna be dropping some money for this, but personally, I gotta have one of these. Again, it would have gone on a wish list probably if I'd known. So, <laughs> I don't know what picture I'm showing you. I can't remember. I did pick one out yesterday and I can't remember what it looks like, but essentially it looks like a Spirit of Sancti, but it's an Anthurium. It looks incredible. So if you like that, but you like Anthurium, this is like a natural progression, right? Or if you just like anything long and spiritus -y, this is absolutely one for you. If you want to see other alternatives to that plant, by the way, I will link that video down below too. Again, if I haven't pestered me, I'll put the link in. Sometimes I forget <laughs> to actually drop them in the description, but I'll drop that video in. But it looks so much like a Spiritus Sancti. It's kind of sexy. Look at those lobes. Look at those lobes. That is so awesome. Oh my God. So yeah, I can't tell you anything about it other than it's... It's pretty hot, to be honest. So let me know what you think about that, because I bet a lot of people don't know that that exists. Right, that concludes Extremely Rare. Last plant on my list is the Holy Category, and yes, we have one. I don't think I did last time, but last time I didn't know this existed. And it did exist of the time of the last video. I just didn't know about it. So you might know what's coming. You may not, but you might. The plant in Holy for Anthurium is widely considered the Anthurium Delta Force. And my God, it is a beauty. It's beautiful. For some reason, it reminds me of a butterfly. I think it's due to the top of the plant, the way it looks. You'll see what I mean if you look at it. So I think, I think this plant is a hybrid of Anthurium Clarinervium and Anthurium Pterodactyl. I, you know what it is? I just feel like Anthurium Clarinervium is such a boss plant. Like how many hybrids on this list have we had with Clarinervium that are doing really well? How many? And Clarinarium is so tough as well. It's a great plant to hybridize. It's it's really produced some nice stuff. I think more work needs to be done with Clarinarium. And I hope someone does because it's such a good plant. So this plant is obviously so ornate. It's absolutely beautiful. I've never seen ever, ever a pattern on an Anthurium like this one. This is unlike anything I have ever seen. And it's very, very beautiful. I'm going to make no bones about it. One of these plants will cost you well into five figures. Not four figures, well into five figures. It is not a cheap plant. There are a few around, but I think if people start selling them, they're going to be, they're going to be silly, silly money. So that's a thing that I got to let you know in case you get too excited about it. I need you to know it. It's not, it's not the best. There have been, oh, I've got to say this. There have been other hybrids of Clarinervium and Pterodactyl around, but they cannot be named Delta Force right? Delta Force only pertains to this one plant, which I feel like Marie Nock of Re Gardens in, I assume, Florida in the US. I think she made this plant, and I think only a true Delta Force is a plant taken from that plant. Mine is because I got it from Florida, and I, I know the history of my plants that I buy, but um, yeah, not everything can be considered that. That's the best way I can put it on the fly in this video. So you might see people selling it. Again, this is a serious situation where you need first, second, third, fourth, and fifth opinions on a plant before you drop this kind of money. Do not muck around with this kind of money. Do not ever. If someone says something that might be too good to be true on a price on this plant, it probably is. I need to tell you that just in case anyone gets stung. I do not like the way the market is at the moment with scammers generally. Really. It's not good. Gotta say that. Yeah, I, I just oh, I just love this plan. It, it was a wishlist plan for quite a bit. It's actually the most money I've ever spent on a plan, and I'm, I'm not even proud of it, to be honest. It's, oh, God. You should have seen me the week that this was shipped, and it was delayed. Like, oh my God. They call that in the trade squeaky bum time, I believe. It was not fun. It was not fun.
So that concludes my Red Planet Index, my updated Anthurium video. As I mentioned before, not all of the Anthuriums are in the first one or in this one. Otherwise, that would make for a very, very boring video, I would honestly say. Please let me know what Red Planet Index you'd like me to do next. I'm thinking Caladium, or more than likely, I'm thinking Skindapsis, because they're getting quite, you know, quite up and, up and coming at the minute. So I really fancy doing that. So let me know what you'd like to do for the next one down below, and I will get to it. I will get planning. One thing I'd like to say on the back of this Red Planet Index is that it does doesn't matter how rare something is, right? Too many people go for plants because they're rare, and I know there's a whole big culture about it. I feel partly responsible. I don't know how responsible I should feel for it, but I want to tell you from me, therefore, it does not matter how rare a plant is. It matters if you like it. It matters if you can afford it. It matters if it makes you happy. That's all that should matter matter. So please do not feel pressured to buy anything in this list, to go searching for anything in this list, to to have some kind of status on social media. Please don't do it. Celebrate plans for their rarity in terms of, hey, that's not something you often see. Not look at like we're one of the 10 people that own this. Do you know what I'm saying? Just please keep that in mind and just, just buy things because you want to. Honestly, that's my best tip for you. Just buy things because you want to. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. A special thank you again to Squarespace for being our sponsor. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. And if you'd like to see any more videos from my channel, whether it be a Red Planet Index or something else, then please feel free to hit that subscribe button. I have been your host with the most, and I will see you next week. Bye, guys.